cons uh, are prevalent in lot of spaces in finance so you rightly mentioned they will be there in asset management firms and typically they will help to build portfolios using quantitative techniques so they will use some kind of a machine learning algorithm to determine which assets uh, should be combined together and uh, create a holistic performance which can give a better risk adjusted return thanks for listening to ibkr's sense security as always there's more content at ibkrpodcast.com and if you're interested in learning more about interactive brokers visit ibkr.com we offer more trading education content such as webinars market commentary market related courses and quant related articles at ibkrcampus.com Welcome back to the Sense of Security podcast. I'm Cassidy Clement, Senior Manager of SEO and Content at Interactive Brokers. Today, I'm your host for our podcast. Our guest is Ishan Shah, the Assistant Vice President of Research and Content at Quant Insti. We're going to discuss the basics of quant. You've likely heard that word before if you look at financial data or work in the industry. So what's its history? And can anyone just jump into the quant pool? Welcome to the program, everyone. So Ishan, thanks for joining us on Sense of Security. Yeah, thanks for having me, Cassidy. Sure, of course. So, what's your background in the quant industry? Yeah, thanks for asking. So, uh, currently, I'm working uh, in Contra uh, by Quant Institute as uh, research and content in research and content team. And my primary job is to create content around algo and quant trading courses. And uh, prior to that, I work with Barclays in their capital markets division. And before that, I worked with uh, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, in their OTC products division. And I've also written a book on machine learning for trading. So that's my background. What is the background of quant or like a brief history of quant? A lot of people have heard that word. But um, if you were to explain some of that to our listeners. Yeah, sure. So uh, quant is basically the, uh, describes profile of people who use mathematical or statistical models to base their trading decisions so the history is actually quite old like you can say that even before the advent of such a high speed computers people were using some kind of mathematics to base their trading decision they were in a way quant but they become more prevalent the invention or with the with the bringing of option pricing models uh, by, in during 1960s and 70s that's where i will say that the real birth of quant started and during 80s and 90s uh, we had this famous hedge funds like renaissance technology and long term capital management which made it quite prevalent during those times and later on from 2000 with the advent of high speed computers and other stuff there was a lot of room and the quant actually grew quite fast like you will see that high frequency trading firms machine learning data analysis and what not actually became quite prevalent from there on would you explain quantitative finance kind of in the finance space i mean you mentioned investment banks hedge funds sometimes there's large amounts of models involved where would a investor or a reader of financial journalism normally see reference to quant i know financial engineering gets mentioned a lot in the same breath where would they normally see that um yeah so uh quants uh, are prevalent in lot of spaces in finance so you rightly mentioned they will be there in asset management firms and typically they will help to build portfolios using quantitative techniques so they will use some kind of a machine learning algorithm to determine which assets uh, should be combined together and uh, create a holistic performance which can give a better risk adjusted returns or they can be there in high frequency trading firms where they will be very smart some smart strategies where they are buying and selling at a millisecond or even nanoseconds and making trading profits for the firm or they might be sitting in a risk management division where they would be assessing how much uh, uh, risk should be given per trader or per company like they, they can also assess credit risk of a company through this quant models so you can think like they are present in a lot of divisions across finance and uh, with the uh, like during the 2008 financial crisis there was a even much more need for using this quant so that you have a better risk management solution in your team so you had mentioned that you can see these quants or this study uh this field of study or this line of work in many different departments within the financial space but are 
quants more prevalent at a large scale at some of these companies, or does it depend on the type of business that they're involved with? Um, because usually, if you're talking about math in general, finance, engineering, it's it's filled with math. But are some businesses more likely to have a higher amount of quants in part of their workforce than others? It depends on what kind of business it is. You're right. So uh, if it's a traditional asset management company, which is primarily doing uh, equity research uh, to base their decisions, they will most likely not hire so many quants. They'll have, let's say, one or two quants. And on the other hand, if it's a, like a hedge fund, like I mentioned, Renaissance Technology or such a uh, large hedge fund, they will have a quite a large number of quants who are working uh, across uh, their divisions, trading divisions, and uh, uh, helping the firm in achieving their objective. As you rightly mentioned, this is a very uh, skillful job in the sense you should be aware of uh, three skills. Uh, one is in programming, you should be fluent with. Second is you should be aware of this mathematical and statistical models. And third is you should also be aware of some trading nuances also. So this three field, this three skills are very difficult to get uh, in a single individual. Therefore, they are concentrated more on the hedge fund and prop trading firms and lesser on the traditional asset management firms. So you had mentioned models, programming, and then some deep mathematical understanding. So what are some common topics that are usually covered within the quant space? Outside looking in, I'm not a quant, but I know that there are some key topics that I will see uh, when it comes to high level discussions about quant, whether it's a white paper or discussions about the space in general, whether it's programming languages, the pricing knowledge, volume, large amounts of data, different types of mathematical theory. So what are those common topics that you would say people who are new to this space should try to brush up on that they're going to come across pretty often? Um, yeah, that's actually a very relevant question. And we also get uh, asked uh, this question quite a lot by uh, newbies in this space. So uh, one of the most important uh, topics uh, or the knowledge required is, uh, let's break it down into three uh, domains. So first is in terms of mathematical and statistical knowledge. You should be aware of basics uh, of mathematics, like what is correlation, what is co-integration, and uh, also how to perform various kind of hypothesis testing and able to interpret the curves, distribution curves, and able to identify the patterns in it and so on and so forth so uh, this is about mathematics then let's move on to the programming side as a quant you will be working with large amount of data if you are in high frequency space will be working with huge tick by tick data so you should be pretty much fluent in working with uh, various data sets like how to retrieve this data where to store this data and once you retrieve the data how to play around with this data and identify the patterns so Let's say if you go to Python programming, you should be familiar with uh, all those uh, stuff. And third is in terms of trading. So since you'll be trading, actually placing the orders in the market, and there will be an impact whenever you hit the market. So you should be aware of uh, various basics like market microstructure, like what is an order book, what is an bid ask spread, and how to trade in market, uh, and so on and so forth. So these are the basic stuff. So on top of this, uh, you can build your expertise in a domain. So for example, if you are interested in machine learning, once you are through with the basics of maths, you can then get into machine learning where you can start with basics like regression and classification models and later on move to neural networks and reinforcement learning kind of models. And similarly in trading, once you're fa familiar with basics of ma market microstructure, then you can move on to more complex and advanced strategies like let's say statistical arbitrage strategy, momentum trading, and even you can use a new sentiment or use natural language processing to extract new sentiment and trade using that. So with some of these topics that you mentioned, are some quants in a specialized field, meaning they only specialize in certain products? Because you can apply a lot of these languages or models to things like stocks, bonds, commodities, but do quants usually specialize? They have, uh, so generally, quant as such is transferable skills. So 
So for example, you have developed some model for stocks. Let's say you have developed a momentum trading strategy for stocks. You can easily transfer that strategy to commodities market. So some of the strategies and some of the skill set, even like machine learning, are easily transferable across the asset. All that you have to learn is the nuances which that particular asset class brings in. For example, you should understand that what all specific nuances are there only in the currency market and not in stock market. For example, they are not very volatile. You can leverage much more than what is available in stocks. So if you have that basics clear, you can easily transfer your strategy from one market to another. And uh, so people usually specialize on the strategy part. So they would be like someone would specialize on uh, machine learning side, someone who specialize on high frequency trading side and readily apply across the thing. What are some ways that someone can learn about quant if they are not at a firm that practices quant? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, so they can typically learn from multiple sources. So the old way of learning is through books. And I have also written a book on machine learning for trading. So you can start with that. And it's actually free uh, for a, or, or everyone. And second is you can also uh, read a book uh, by Ernie Chen. Uh, the name of the book is Algo Trading Winning Strategies. And similarly, you'll find books by uh, Marcus Lubis de Prado on machine learning. Based on your area of interest, you will find these books. And if you start want to start from very basic, you can also start with uh, options uh, book by John C. Hull. So that is one way. Another is like if you're just very young and you're not used to this old ways of learning, then you can also start with online courses. Uh, so you can start with our own Quantra where I'm currently working. Like uh, it has uh, courses on algo and quant trading. Or you will find these courses at other places also. So based on your inclination and where do you find the right objectives, where your objectives are met, you can start with that. The second is online courses. And third is you can also join some events, seminars, even podcasts like one uh, which we are doing uh, to increase your knowledge about this space. So are there some soft skills that quants may need to make sure they're prepared for, like maybe long hours or tedious tasks since you're looking at large data sets, anything like that that you can recall? Uh, typically at entry level, the requirement of soft skills are less. It's more about you are like individual contributor. You are given a task, delivering on those tasks. And you just need patience uh, to deal with uh, long hours. But as you grow in your role, you become a team leader. That's where your soft skills become even more important. You have to manage team. You have to understand uh, their requirements and deal with it. And similarly, if you start growing even much more, then there will be a client side to it. where You have to talk to clients, explain what kind of trading strategies uh, you are deploying. And the requirement of soft skills will be much more higher when you move to the client side of the So some people say that go into the quant field or to become a quant, that you have to love numbers, like eat, breathe, and sleep numbers. Do you agree with that? Or do you think that somebody can come in from maybe more of a standard issue finance side and jump in? Yeah, um, so I don't have any particular bias. I feel anyone who has zeal for learning and inclination to excel in this field uh, will eventually make up uh, in this field and do well. But someone who is very good with numbers, who loves uh, this field, very passionate about this, will definitely more likely uh, to succeed in this field because every now and then you are uh, dealing with some model, analyzing backtesting results, you're looking at various parameters like Sharpe ratio, analyzing what are the PNL distribution. So if you love numbers, it's very easy to pick up uh, the skills and it will come naturally also, right? You can easily spot if there is some anomaly or some some something is wrong. So that gives an edge. But but I've seen a lot of people who are not from mathematics background, a very a different non-mathematics background. They came to us, they learned from us, and eventually they made it big in this field. So normally within the quant space, from an education perspective, are people usually just bachelor's degree, a mix between that and master's and PhD? What do you normally see within the space? So we, uh, what we currently see is across the dimensions, uh, people are getting into this field. Like we even had someone who was 70 years old after retirement, was so much passionate, started his own quant reading desk. And we see also a lot of young guys uh, who 
get into this after their bachelor's or even after their masters they want to start their own trading desk or they want to make a career in this field that's their primary objective of getting into this field but i'll say majority of them would be around their 30s uh, who are who who are typically wants to use quant in their own trading setup and the younger crowd is mostly looking to make a career uh, in this field where they'll be joining some or the other Interesting. Those are some interesting points. So thanks for joining us, Isha. Thanks, Kasidi. I hope this was helpful. Yeah, thank you. So as always, listeners can learn more about an array of financial topics for free at ibkrcampus.com. Follow us on your favorite podcast network and feel free to leave us a rating or review. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for listening to IBKR's Sense of Security. As always, there's more content at ibkrpodcast.com. And if you're interested in learning more about interactive brokers, visit ibkr.com. We offer more trading education content such as webinars, market commentary, market-related courses, and quant-related articles at ibkrcampus.com. The analysis in this material is provided for information only and is not and should not be construed as an offer to sell or the solicitation of an offer to buy any security. To the extent that this material discusses general market activity, industry, or sector trends or other broad-based economic or political conditions, it should not be construed as research or investment advice. To the extent that it includes references to specific securities, commodities, currencies, or other instruments, those references do not constitute a recommendation by IBKR to buy, sell, or hold such investments. This material does not and is not intended to take into account the particular financial conditions, investment objectives, or requirements of individual customers. Before acting on this material, you should consider whether it is suitable for your particular circumstances and, as necessary, seek professional advice.